Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's always my great pleasure and delight to welcome you to anything we do in CEPLAT, but this year is exceptionally inspiring and interesting because we'll be speaking about a very topical issue, energy transition, and we'll be focusing on the Africa uh, perspective of energy transition. I am indeed very glad that CEPLAT is having this conversation, energy transition, carbon emissions, climate change. It's real. Climate change is before us and it's affecting every aspect of our life. In fact, our planet is threatened by man's actions. So I really commend CEPLAT for starting this topic. Nigerian government is, was signatory to the Paris Agreement. But as part of that decarbonization uh, project and the transition to net zero, issues of gas come up. And we talk of just and equitable transition. For that just and equitable transition to be real, we must consider the realities and the various uh, different uh, realities of developing economies. And for us in Africa, and most especially Nigeria, gas will play a critical role as a transition fuel. It is indeed a great honor for me to be invited as a guest of honor at the CEPLAT Energy Summit 2021 with the theme global trends in energy transition and the Africa perspective. I congratulate the leadership and the entire staff of CEPLAT as this auspicious event also marks the formal unveiling of the brand attributes which, which bear, bear testament, testament to CEPLAT's movement with the times, evidenced by its full transition to an energy company. Apart from the fact that the world was grappling with a pandemic, in Nigeria, we were also waging a battle of wits to pass the petroleum industry bill. We were tenacious in the pursuit of that objective because we recognized that the PIB, when passed into law, will inaugurate a new era for the industry following decades of legislative attempts to strengthen the legal, regulatory, fiscal, and governance framework of the petroleum sector. On 16th August, 2021, this aspiration crystallized when Mr. President signed the PIB into law. The new law has enhanced the Nigerian petroleum industry's reputation provides the pathway to new investments and consolidates our ability to play a significant role in meeting the world's growing demand for energy. Even more significant is the fact that the passage of this legislation is coming at a time that the global energy investment outlook is becoming clouded by concerted effort aimed at expediting and enthroning a lower carbon future. The PIA 2021 will undoubtedly assist in harnessing Nigeria's potential to achieve its plan of increasing oil production to 4 million barrels per day and oil reserves from 37 billion barrels to 40 billion barrels, while also drawing on the country's estimated 600 trillion cubic feet of gas, of natural gas, to provide clean and efficient energy. These resources will be crucial in supplying world markets with a broad portfolio of energy options, as well as supporting the global endeavor to alleviate energy poverty as envisioned in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, Goal 7. This is our approach to the issue of renewable energy and the energy transition. 
while acknowledging our commitment to net zero as a nation, there is no gain saying the fact that Nigeria requires fossil fuel as its base load energy source. This is undoubtedly a major concern for climate activists in developed nations. But the clamor to emphasize only renewable energy as a sole pathway to energy transition is a source of concern for African countries that are still working to achieve base load industrialization, address energy poverty, and ensure reliable power supply. This is why in Nigeria, we reject the concept of a single pathway to the energy transition. Indeed, we prefer the concept of just energy transition, which takes into cognizance the specific circumstances of each nation in developing the energy transition pathway that best achieves the environmental, social, political, and economic objectives of the transition in that specific nation. Multiple pathways to the energy transition should and must exist in order to ensure that no country is left behind in the process of achieving net zero by 2050. In Nigeria, the position above recognizes the possibility of a structural decline in the price of oil and consequential fiscal vulnerabilities that may arise, as well as the increased risk exposure therefrom, and is responding to it in several ways. First is the focus on gas. For us, this is at the heart of the energy transition and represents the first step in the journey to renewables away from oil. Already, we have declared that gas is our transition fuel and also represents a destination fuel as we envisage that it will be part of our energy mix by 2050, given the vast resources that can be commercialized and utilized. Furthermore, generous incentives have been proposed in the Petroleum Industry Act 2021 to enable development, distribution, penetration, and utilization of gas. The National Gas Expansion Program was also launched in January 2020 to drive domestic gas utilization. Our proven gas reserves are sufficient to cover current demand levels and support plans for the construction of nine new gas-fired power plants with a combined nameplate capacity of nearly 6,000 megawatts by 2037. This validates gas, a viable and transformational fuel for industrial development. This is why President Muhammad Buhari, who is also the Honorable Minister of Petroleum Resources, has declared 2021 to 2030 as the decade of gas, which provides the fulcrum for focusing effort and resources required at making gas the centerpiece of Nigeria's economy in 2030. To conclude, I hereby wish to once again congratulate the leadership and entire staff of CEPLAT for this event and thank you for the honor and opportunity afforded me to give this message. I wish us all successful deliberations. Thank you. Your Excellencies, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our chairman of the board said today we will unveil a beautiful, beautiful baby that will grow into the future of this energy transition. To begin that journey of unveiling this next phase of this great company, I'd like to welcome once again our chairman of the board as he tells us the story as the board has desired it to be in the next milestone. Welcome again, 
Dr. ABC Ojako. Mr. Vice President, Your Excellency, ably represented, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, once again my great honor to uh, welcome you to this summit. This year's summit, as I said earlier on, will be heralding the ideas that CEPLAT is committed to delivering in energy transition. Let me seize this opportunity to congratulate His Excellency uh, Timmy Press Silva for the passage of PIA. One of the things PIA has done, even for us as a company, is the fact that one singular thing is done in gas. It has revised the DSO regime to the, D, the, to the uh, domestic delivery obligation. This is what CEPLAT has been longing for and we've been pushing for, and we're going to see this really impact very greatly what happens in the energy transition. It is my honor and privilege to kindly come, uh, uh, welcome once again the Honorable Minister for Environment, who represents Mr. Vice President, to kindly come up to the stage, and all the ministers who are here present to please come up on stage. I'll also call on our CEO to please come. And I'd also like to invite the board members of CEPLAT who are here. I would like to have all the kings who we have invited, the kings from our areas of operation and including the representation uh, uh, sent by the Oba of Benin. Three, two, one, reliable energy, limitless potential. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Absolutely, absolutely fantastic. 
You know, in Seplat, for us, the journey is very clear where we started, where we're headed. Energy transition for us is not the end of oil and gas, but it is an era for us to deliver the right mix of energy that would deliver solutions and create prosperity in the environment. Mr. Mele Kolo Kierisa, the stage is all yours. And uh, this surely is a very important uh, 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 engagement that's going on. Uh, first of all, energy transition is the lead conversation globally around what happens to fossil fuel. It's literally not around fossil fuel. That's the common mistake that we see all over the world. Uh, when you say net carbon zero, it doesn't mean zero fuel. Zero fuel fossil fuel and we all understand this but for us uh, in in this country and in africa in general as we approach cop 26 uh, the key message and which i agree concur with many of these, these panelists that have spoken and of course many of our senior colleagues who have spoken before the the panel members is the key issue is that there must be sustainable and and just way of transition so that countries who are left behind can do a catch-up and that there must be a recognition of, an, of an, a transition fuel, which essentially everybody agrees that uh, uh, gas will be the transmission fuel. And for us in this country, we must take the next practical step to close this energy gap, uh, the energy security gap that we, we clearly have in our country today. And we can anchor that around the gas resources that we have. We're already doing a lot of work around this, getting the infrastructure right in place, aligning our partners, and, and also getting the investing community to recognize that this is the market here, this is the, the safe way to to exit the, the situation that we are, we are facing. And, and ultimately, uh, for us as the as a national oil company, we have one key role, which is to bring everybody on the table to see how we can take advantage of the energy transition opportunities that will surely come up. And even in the liquids, you know, it doesn't mean zero liquids. As Mike had said clearly, there are forecasts that is showing that even in 50 years' time to come, you still have up to 100 million barrels of day of uh, potential liquids uh, consumption uh, in, in the world. So. We are not out of the oil age, uh, surely not within those short time frame that we see globally that is being spoken around. Uh, but for us, but what do we do about it? You know, the use of fossil fuel must change so that it comes to a much more friendly and much more climate friendly uh, mechanism put in place. Uh, we will go to COP26 as a country, Honorable Minister, you're leading us. And uh, as, as, as we go for that meeting, the key issue is that you know, how do we move, you know, you know, just in a very just manner, uh, in a transition that will work for everybody in a way that the world will support in this part of the world, particularly in sub-Saharan African countries, to, to move in a, in a manner that is just and, 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 and possible to, to deliver. Uh, we're not giving up uh, on many of the things that we need to do. First of all, uh, bringing new use for gas in our country, auto gas projects, and you know, declaring this year, the next decade as a decade of gas, which means that we we'll focus more attention on gas monetization, gas utilization, bringing up gas-based industries, uh, creating very many other opportunities, so utilizing LPG and other sources of uh, of energy that are clearly not within the uh, the liquids uh, framework. So uh, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to speak to this very informed uh, audience. Uh, we're here to support uh, any op initiative of this nature to to ensure that uh, everybody is aligned, everybody sees the challenges and the opportunities that are, that are here. And, and lastly, uh, Chairman of Seplat and all the team, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to speak to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And again, um, a great pleasure to be participating in this year's CEPLAT Energy Summit. In this conversation, we need to make sense of what's happening in the world. Everything around the global markets, the financial markets, the oil markets, the energy market, but also what the COVID pandemic has done to disrupt the world and supply in general. And our next speaker is going to help to do that. He's going to show us where the opportunities lie in the midst of a crisis. His name is Daniel Jurgen. He is, as was rightly said, a Pulitzer Prize winning best-selling author and energy expert. And in this conversation, he's going to be drawing insights from his latest book. It's titled The New Map. And he's going to help us understand what the future holds with the restructuring of energy politics and geopolitics in general. So, Daniel Jurgen, it is our greatest pleasure to welcome you to the CEPLAT Energy Summit. And I really look forward to the lessons we're going to learn from the insights you're going to share. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Lorato. I'm very pleased to be part of this uh, CEPLAT uh, Energy Summit. Uh, I think uh, it's very timely. Uh, obviously, CPLAT itself has uh, laid it down a definition of the company 
and its objectives that fit with the overall themes of Africa, which are sustainable energy solutions for society and certainly for Nigeria. Uh, the conference, the summit is obviously uh, very timely. It comes on the heels of the new hydrocarbon law, uh, and, uh, just in advance of the Glasgow uh, Climate Conference, uh, the shifting role of international companies and the opportunity that creates for entrepreneurial domestic companies in Nigeria, and also aiming at addressing the energy needs of the peoples of uh, Nigeria and Africa and the importance of energy development uh, in uh, their future. Uh, this is all part of, you've already pointed to it, to a new era. And uh, what, I'm going to talk about three things uh, this today. One of the big changes in what I call the new map involving uh, energy and geopolitics. Secondly, I think we've got to look at the energy crisis that's now unfolding in Europe uh, and in China and in India, uh, what it warns about inadequate investment in energy resources. And then going to uh, what you were just talking about, a critical question as to whether there's going to be a new north-south divide on climate and energy between developed and developing countries. So we're in a new era, and I call this new era the new map. Full title of my book is Ener The New Map, Energy, Clim uh, energy, Climate, and the Clash of Nations, because energy and geopolitics comes together. And what led me to write the new map and to think about these themes were the big changes in the map, in the geography of energy, in trade flows of energy, obviously in climate policy, and in geopolitics in general, and geopolitics that affect energy. Just to cite some of the key changes, one the world has gotten used to, but it's a really big change, was the rise of uh, U.S. shale. The U.S went from a country that imported 60% of its oil to a country that exports oil. What a dramatic change in its position. Uh, it's now the world's largest producer of oil and gas. Uh, it has a big influence in terms of changing the nature of the global oil market. You used to think that there were the big two who dominated world oil, Russia and, uh, and Saudi Arabia. Now there's the big three led by the United States. And it's had a lot of foreign policy co consequences. Secondly, uh, is the uh, growth of um, LNG. And, you know, you look at the maps and that's changed relations among countries. And gas right now is very important. We've seen significant shift in geopolitics, which is relevant to Africa as a source of uh, where foreign direct investment comes from. And that shift, which is a mega shift, is in the relationship between the United States and China. And it's very much on the table today. Uh, in the new map, I describe what was the WTO, World Trade Organization consensus, that everybody would be part of the same system and work together. And we've moved into a different era, one of great power competition and strategic rivalry. I looked at the um, last national security uh, guidance from the Obama administration, and it talked about China being a partner, constructive engagement, uh, and then you look at what the Biden administration said in its first months, describing China as a strategic uh, rival, uh, as the only country that could kind of challenge the international order as it is now. Uh, this There's a strong energy dimension to this that takes many forms, but many other countries, and I hear this in Asia, I hear it in Africa, I hear it in Latin America, don't want to be caught in the middle between the United States and China because China is such an important market, and yet there's such an important relationship with the United States. We see this competition playing out in technology, in trade, in competitive finance, in the South China Sea, in military expenditure, and highly relevant to Africa is in funding in China's Belt and Road versus the new Development Finance Corporation from the United States. We've, we've had a great conference here today and I'm up here to speak on behalf of the board and management of CEPLAT in a vote of thanks. Today we put across the new CEPLAT brand, which is not just a name change, it's actually just reflecting what CEPLAT energy is all about. And it's all about um, not just providing energy for the few, it's actually for socially making an impact Transforming lives is what we need to do as Sibla Energy. That's what we put out there. We put our mission, 
our purpose, our mission, our vision, our values, and our strap line. And hopefully everyone can remember that. We then revealed the new Seplat brand, and uh, so it was wonderful there. Then uh, we had great panel sessions, lots of questions, answers, thought-provoking. Um, Daniel Jurgen, who obviously is a Pulitzer Prize winning author, and you could tell he was relating a lot of that to us, He's talking about the north-south divide, and we actually have to have, you can't have the north telling the south how it works, right? So we have to fight back and put our own thing. So on the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources in COP26, he's got to go in with that with a good negotiating position. But we had that, then we had um, Nduka on, on stage and his panel, and I think he, he was controversial as ever, as you would expect that from Nduka. Um, today we put across the new Seplat brand, which is not just a name change, it's actually just reflecting what Seplat energy is all about. And it's all about um, not just providing energy for the few, it's actually for socially making an impact. Transforming lives is what we need to do as Seplat energy. Okay, and that's what we put out there. We put our mission, our purpose, our mission, our vision, our values on our strap line. And Hopefully everyone can remember that. We then revealed the new Seplat brand, which we can see, well, I don't know, where is it? But it's all over the place. Um, we then um, had the, uh, here we go, there we go. Come on, round of applause, please. Round of applause. <laughs> Seplat Energy. We then had our um, latest um, what would you call it, our latest challenge for people, you know, in terms of the awards that we just saw. And I think, I mean, I was personally blown away just with, there was over 100 entries, and apparently in that, there wasn't a lot of difference between all the entries. Okay, so what you saw in front of you was a very, very tough competition. And I think the three winning um, uh, organizations, businesses, you know, it's already functional today. So we're going to take that from today and we're going to grow it even bigger into the future. And that's just something great. So thank you. Thank you very much. So we, what we want to do is go away from today and not forget about today, not just to get as a point, a line in the sand. What we need to do is we need to work with all our partners and we can see them in front of us. We need to take this on Seplat cannot do this alone. Sorry, Sepla Energy cannot do this alone. We cannot. We need partnerships. We need our communities. We need our support. And so I, and on, on that basis, I would like to thank all of our communities. I think the representation here today is just very, very good. The government partnerships, the endorsements, has really gone to the heart of SEPLAT. And I know I can see our chairman in front of us, and he will go away from this session today with a big smile on his face. So for all of that, I want to thank everyone. Thanks, everyone, and God bless all. Oh, and can't forget, can't forget, when you leave here today, you'll be handed a gift. And that gift is a tree for life. Okay, so it's a small tree. Choma, hold it up. <laughs> this tree, small tree it is today, it will grow much bigger, of course. I want you to take it home, plant it somewhere meaningful for you, each individual, care for it, nurture it, grow it, and it will live through your lifetime. And that's to remember this, okay. And of course, we're going to do this on a much, much bigger scale. So thank you very much, everyone. God bless and travel home safely.